one of them. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every way and the sin that creeps to us so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding his shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth has passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride and for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among the mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Pray this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The word of the Lord. Grace and peace to all of you from God our Father and from our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Just a few weeks ago on a Friday night, while many of us were busy watching and engaged in a football game east of town, it came to our attention that there were some students wandering around the cemetery. I'm not sure what they were doing there, but I'm sure it was pretty spooky uh, for them, as you can imagine. So what were they doing, wandering around our cemetery during a, during a football game? I'm not truly entirely uh, sure what they were doing, but I had heard something about a soft pellet gun and a cell phone flashlights.
building. Did you know that these pews and this space will be over a hundred years old in December of this year, 2014? So just think of all the souls. Think of all the saints that have been in this space with you and before you. Think of all the saints that will be gathered here after you. We list the names of those saints who have lived with us and those that have died this past year. And that list is so full of memory, that list is so full of meaning, that it's hard to bear as we read those names. Some of the losses are expected losses, people that have lived long and faithful lives and we just celebrate their long life with us and they've peacefully gone home to Jesus and it really is a celebration. But also the names that we read this morning are tragic. They are lives that ended way too soon. But we remember. We remember on this All Saints Sunday because we are still surrounded by them. We are still surrounded by all of the saints. I was thinking of those youngsters in the cemetery during that football game doing their little pranks, maybe even being searched out by the police department and by the pastor of the church. And I thought, well, maybe we could do something productive, youngsters doing something productive in the cemetery. So our young people, our confirmation students, went out to the cemetery between services, and they took little sheets of paper and they engraved names of the saints out in the cemetery, and they brought the names back here for you to view, and they're posted on the walls. You might want to turn around and see them, or look at them as you leave today. While preparing for other funerals recently, I have been remembering just a few of the saints who have made this place a church for me, and the saints that have made this church a place for you. Saints that are now feasting at the table of the Lamb, but whose presence that I still miss in the weekly feasts that we have here below. And you miss them too. The scripture verse for today reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is now seated at the right hand of God. We are surrounded by the saints. We are surrounded literally by the saints. And we remember them today. So here's one reason to remember the saints. Their stories tell of God's faithfulness. Their stories tell of God's mercy, of God's wisdom, of God's love. Their stories tell about how God sustained them during their life, through a dusty depression, through times of scarcity, through times of abundance, through both companionship and loneliness. Their lives, whether long or brief, tell of God's tender mercy and love toward them. And because their stories tell of that love, of God's love, it also tells of God's love toward you and towards me, towards all of us. And what their witness says, what the witness of all the saints tells you and me is to keep running. Keep 
burning no matter how difficult or challenging it may be in this life, the saints call out to us and they tell us to keep running. It's worth it. It's worth it. Here's another reason to remember the saints. We remember especially those saints who have died because they remind us of the place we are running toward. We are running toward the kingdom of God, the kingdom of justice and mercy that they have hoped for and that God has promised. They remind us of the hope of the resurrection, the hope we have of a joyful reunion with them. So that is why we remember them today. So today we are remembering our saints and we are surrounded by them. Some of these names you may know, some of them you may not know, but you may have shared a pew with them or you may have smiled or said hello to them. Or better yet, maybe they smiled at you and said hello to you. You see, these are your family members. The saints are all of your family members. And to this list, you'll have to add the other saints whose names you alone know because you carry them and you have carried them forever in your heart. And so you'll add your names to the names that we read today. And the reason that we come to the Lord's table to share your communion this day is because here we commune not only with Christ, but we also are brought together with all those who live eternally with Christ. And so if you've lost someone, this table is where you come to find them once again. Remember those youngsters out at the cemetery, shining their little cell phone lights and maybe shooting their soft pellet guns at each other? Remember the spotlight of the Dawson Police Department that was piercing through the darkness of that evening? When we remember the saints, you see, it gives us a light that pierces through the darkness. It's the light that the saints brought to us in their lives, but it's also the light of Christ that shines ever so brightly among us and among you. So when you come to the table today, will you light a candle? You light a candle in memory of someone that you hold dear in your heart, because I know that their light still shines among you, and their light still shines among us. And we see that light. We see that light today at the communion table, and we see that light shining through you in your life. So when you come for communion, will you light a candle in memory of your loved one? No, you won't. Or will you? All right. You come and you light, you light a candle. I hope that those kids who paraded around that dark cemetery that one night on that Friday night, I hope that they remembered that they were surrounded by the names, by the grandparents who had died, by a beloved daughter, by a beloved aunt who died of cancer, the older sister, the beloved mother who touched many, the beloved son who was an inspiration. I hope that those Franksters remembered those saints that were surrounding them, just as we remember the saints that surround us today. So let's take some time to remember our saints. We're going to invite the families of those that have been baptized because those are the saints as well, those holy ones that have been baptized into the family of God. So I'm going to invite you to come forward if you've been baptized uh, this uh, past year. And most are babies, so you got to bring your family with you. But will you come and as we read your name, then will you light a candle in honor? And because we're all a family of God, somewhere here in the early service, we will still light the candles for uh, all of those that were baptized. So come forward now. And you can just pass.
pass. This will light the gold candles that are in the Bach baptismal area. And we'll just pass uh, the candle lighter to each other as we reach the ends. So let's begin with our litany. In holy baptism, God makes saints out of sinners. In holy communion, God forgives the sins of all the saints. In the assembly today, we give thanks for all the saints, the newly baptized, and those from whom their labors rest, who have fought the good fight and who have gained the crown. Recalling that we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and sustained by the Savior's body and blood, we keep on keeping on as God gives us breath to the praise of God's glory. We will sing, children of the Heavenly Father. Cycles. 
And we thank you for your journey with us through life and death and beyond death. And we thank you that when we gather at your communion table, we commune with all your saints. As we meet you, come to us afresh with your Holy Spirit. As we remember now, Wendell Anderson. And again, if there isn't a family member here, would you represent the family by taking a hand and lifting in the holy fold? Agnes Harrison. Donald Ball. Thank you. 
Jane Moss. Thank you for your presence, holy God, in the lives of these persons and for your light that shone through them. Let your light so shine through us that we may join them in your glory when our time comes. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Let all 